Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kin folks said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. take a sailing on that yacht. I know, that's why I'm getting my critters used to riding on the water. <laughs> I don't recollect them being invited. <laughs> well, I don't care nothing about going naked. Now, Ellie, you're the main reason I'm thinking of buying this yacht. What you mean? Well, according to Mr. Drysdale, there is a bunch of high-quality young fellas sails around in them boats. Oh, are you aiming to get me married off? Well, I wouldn't put it as blunt as that. If the right fella come along, I ain't aiming to sick the dogs on him. Well, Jethro says I'm too old to get a man. <laughs> well, uh, Jethro knows a heap of book learning, but when it comes to courting and romance, he's about as bright as a smokehouse at midnight. Who's that, Uncle Jet? Nobody. <laughs> you get yourself into a nice, pretty dress. Yes, sir, Pop. I see you're all ready to go. Oh, yes, sir. How about Granny? Well, she's changed her mind. She says she ain't going out on no ocean on no yacht. I just had her talked into it. I know you did. And whilst I was helping her pack vittles just now, I throwed in a few clinchers myself. Like what? <laughs> like I says, nothing to be scared of, Granny. Even if you fall overboard, I'll save you. <laughs> I says, heck fire. I can swim faster than any old shark. How's it going, boy? Thank you. And then I says, even if the shark gets to you first, he's gonna think twice before he goes to gnawing on a tough little old bony piece of meat like you. <laughs> I bet that made her feel good. You'd have thought so, wouldn't you? But it was just about then that she said she wasn't going. Well, I'll go talk to you. Hey, you want me to help? No, no, you've done enough. Oh, Uncle Jim, here's something that might cheer her up. Tell her that even if the shark does get her, it's quicker than drowning. <laughs> I remember that. Oh, and we all gotta go sometime. <laughs> You ain't going out on that boat, are you? Sure am, Granny. Well, what will you do if you fall off in the ocean? Well, I can swim. Ain't you ever heard of sharks? Of course I have. Well, what will you do if you meet up with one of them? Nothing I can do. Pa says I can't bring home no more critters. <laughs> Foolishness. Foolishness, that's what it is. The whole family's gonna get it up. Them sharks is gonna be having clampy chowder. Granny, what's this I hear about you not coming with us? Jed, hill folks don't belong on no ocean. Granny, you done let Jethro scare you. Mr. Drysdale said being on one of them big yachts is just like being in your own house. And I've saved myself a trip. <laughs> I'm done here. <laughs> Drysdale said there's a lot of fun on them big yachts. You can fish off them. You can fall off them, too. And I ain't aiming to be no snack for no shark. Jethro really has got you worried about nothing. I ain't so sure. I've been eating fish for 70 years, and they could be carrying a mighty strong grudge. Well, I'm plumb ashamed of you. Jed, I was born on dry land. I was raised on dry land. And when my time comes, I aim to go on dry land. But that's just <laughs> it. You know the good Lord is looking out for you. He'll decide when it's your time to go. When I go, it's up to him. Where I go, is up to me. How do I look, Miss Hathaway? And no flattery now. 
Don't be influenced by the fact that I'm your employer and could fire you like that. Chief, you, you look magnificent. Thank you. Not for what you said, but for telling the truth. <laughs> and, and speaking of the truth, you haven't praised, uh, told me what you think of this yacht idea. Well, frankly, I can't quite picture Jed Clampett belonging to a yacht club. Well, you don't have to. Just picture Ellie Mae being pursued by all those wealthy young yachting types. What a love story. Rich boy meets rich girl. And they open a joint account in your bank. <laughs> and I live happily ever after. <laughs> Hi, Miss Jane, Mr. Drysdale. Come on in. Thank you, Jethro. Good to be aboard. <laughs> Everyone ready, Jethro? Uh, no, ma'am. Ellie's still getting dressed. Oh, I'll go up and see if I can be of some help. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Drysdale, are you in the Navy? No, no, lad. These are merely yachting togs. Though I do have the look of a seahawk about me. <laughs> Admiral Drysdale, born to command. <laughs> Go braid this sleeve, and I'd look every inch the skipper. Hey, I thought I heard company. Howdy there. Hey, Uncle Jed, is Mr. Drysdale going to be the skipper of your yacht? Well, no. No, no, of course not. Here's our skipper. <laughs> Standing by for order, sir. Hey, Mr. Drysdale, can Uncle Jed wear a fancy uniform like yours? My boy, your Uncle Jed can wear the fanciest uniform money can buy. A dog! Hey, Granny! <laughs> Granny, you gotta change your mind about going to the ocean. I ain't changing nothing but my clothes. Oh, come on, Granny, please. <laughs> set the foot out of this house! Hey, you don't have to. I'll tote you. Get <laughs> girl, put your granny down. I can't. She's locked on to something. Granny, let go. I ain't letting go until he pushed me down. I can't put her down until she lets go. That ain't fair to begin one. Now put her down. She'll get away. Leave go. See, now I gotta catch her again. Self scarce, boy. Go take a drive. Where to? Anywhere. Hey, can I get your uniform for you? Yeah, yeah, you do. Hey, the fancy one? Sure, sure. Now get. Now listen to reason, Granny. There's nothing to be frightened of. Come on, Granny. Don't be afraid he can't. You can coax, plead, and shame mouth me all you want. I ain't a budger. Why do you have to be so all fired stubborn? Well, for one thing, I. I can't get my head out of here. <laughs> Not, but that stair railing might be just a holder we need to lead that little mule to water. We're supposed to meet the yacht people at the harbor at 11. Well, you and Miss Jane go on ahead. Granny ain't likely to back down in front of company, no how. Well, how will you get to the yacht harbor? In a truck. Oh, no! no. <laughs> oh, I mean, it would be much better if you arrived in my limousine. How come? Well, because it's, it's bad luck for the skipper of a yacht to arrive in a truck. <laughs> right? Well, right. It's, uh, it's an old superstition of the sea. Yeah, and you wouldn't want to jinx the ship. Of course not. Fine. Well, my limousine will be standing by. We'll see you at the pier. Number 21. We'll be there quick as Granny gives in. <laughs> Uncle Jed, wait till you see the uniform I got for you. You're going to make Mr. Drysdale look like a plucked chicken. Oh, Granny's got a head caught in the stair rail. Yeah, I know. She says if we'll get her loose, she'll go down the boat with us. It worked. Come on, you. Hey, Granny, how'd you get your head in there? Never mind that. Let's just get it out. I think it'll go through if I put my shoulder again it and shove. <laughs> no, no, boy. Maybe it'll help if I butt her head. <laughs> Never mind, Ellie. How about I turn her sideways and try yanking the rest of her through this way? I think the best plan would be to spread these bars, Mike. All of them? No, just these two. Oh. That's a ticket. Fine and dandy. Here, Uncle Jeff, put on your uniform. I believe I'll pass that. Oh, please, Uncle Jim. Yeah, come on, Paul. 
Well, all right. While I'm doing it, you call up to Drysdale, tell the chauffeur we're ready for the limousine. Limousine? According to Mr. Drysdale, showing up in one of them is good luck. Let's do it. He's gonna need all the luck we can get. Hey, can I drive it? Well, I reckon I'd save him a heap of trouble. I'll go fetch it. And uh, leave the truck over to their house. Miss Drysdale might want to drive into Beverly Hills. <laughs> Pa and his yacht and get up. <laughs> yes, sir. I told you it was a doozy. Where'd you get this outfit, Jethro? Over to the movie studio. What you call the wardrobe department. <laughs> kind of fancy for fishing and a like, ain't it? I reckon so. It's the only one they had in your size. <laughs> Come on, Granny. I'm coming. <laughs> What's this for? One of them shark swallows me. He's gonna get himself a double barrel bellyache. Granny, I done told you. Ain't no shark gonna go to gnawing on a tough little old bony piece of. Now well, let's hop in, everybody. Yes, sir. Reckon you can find that harbor? Yes, sir. All we got to do is take off out that harbor freeway till we see some boats. Well, that sounds reasonable to me. Now, when we get there, we'll be looking for number 21. Yes, sir. Your boat? Reckon it's one of them? Heck no. They's too little. According to Mr. Drysdale, them yachts as big as houses. They better be, or you ain't getting me on one. <laughs> Sandy Biggins over on that side. <laughs> now, them is what you call yachts. <laughs> Feel for number 21, everybody. <laughs> Here she is on the jet, number 21. Looks like a dandy big yacht, Granny. Yeah, but if you ask me, it ain't strictly brand new. Maybe not, but they got a lot of hired hands cleaning it up for it. <laughs> nice looking fellas, too. It ain't easy to get into this yacht harbor. Yeah. For a minute, I thought that feller at the front gate wasn't going to let us in. Well, he sure changed the tune when he seen Pa. I'll say he did. Fell all over yourself being polite then. It's loaded and everything. <laughs> well, you got to remember, they's hoping I'll buy this boat. Folks is generally extra polite when they're trying to sell you something. <laughs> Where's Mr. Drysdale and Miss Jane? Why don't you youngins take a look around for him? Yes, sir, Pa. Did. Why do you suppose Mr. Drysdale is so all fired head up on you buying that boat? Well, for one thing, he thinks it's a chance for Ellie Mae to meet some young fellas of high quality. Don't look now, but I think it's working already. What you mean? There's a couple of boys looking down at us. They must have spied Ellie because her eyes are bugging out like a bullfrog. <laughs> is that an admiral? That's an admiral. Let's get the OD. <laughs> You know, Cliff, it's quite a feeling of responsibility. What's that? Being the senior officer aboard this ship. Say, that's right. With the skipper and exec both ashore, you're in command. Worried? <laughs> Not a bit. The ability to command is something you're born with. Either you've got it or you haven't. Let's face it, Cliff. Sir! Hey, pardon, sir. Just a moment, man. Let's face it, Cliff. I've got it. <laughs> All right, men, what is it? There's an admiral about to come aboard, sir. Very well, you may return. <laughs> Admiral, are you sure? Well, sir, he's got a whole sleeve full of gold braid. Yes, sir. He's got like that, and then like that, and then like that again. Isn't that an Admiral? That's an Admiral. <laughs> oh, boy, is that an Admiral. We can't find hiding to hire, Mr. Drosdale. Maybe he's already on the boat. Well, I go up and have a look. Y'all wait here in case he shows up. <laughs> Tell communications to locate the skipper. Alert the crew. Find someone to pipe the admiral aboard. Get six men for side boys. Get everything shaped up for inspection. <laughs> Never mind that. Move! Welcome aboard, sir. <laughs> this is a, a great surprise. Honor! Uh, relax, boys. Uh, Mr. Drysdale here? Is he supposed to be, sir? Yes, he is. Then he's here, sir. <laughs> good, good. Come on up, everybody. Come on, Granny. I've changed my mind. I'm gonna wait in the car. Hey, 
I hope your family enjoyed the tour of the ship, sir. Uh, the lieutenant will be with you in a moment. Uh, he's trying to contact the skipper. Oh, Uncle Jed's a skipper. Uh, of course. I, I met Commander Blake. <laughs> Fine and dandy. Fine and dandy. Jed Clampett, if you buy this boat, you are plumb off your rocker. Little tiny rooms, ladders for stairs, iron doors. Well, I grant you, we want to do some remodeling. Knock out a few walls, raise up them doorways so Jethro won't always be whomping his head. Did commence to throb a little after the fourth or fifth time. I like this boat, Paul. Yeah, Uncle Jed, it's a dandy. What do you young'uns know about boats? We you know as much about them as you do. Then you don't know nothing, so I should. <laughs> Bunch of nice-looking fellas on it. Yeah, I kind of noticed that myself. So did I. And I ain't cooking for 250 hired hands. Now, Granny, you know and I know it don't take all them fellas to run this boat. Then somebody's padding the payroll. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale had them come to see Ellie. All of them appears to have proper bringing up. Real polite now, especially to Paul. Well, yeah, Ellie, but like I said, they may be put on. Don't forget that he's looking to sell me this boat. <laughs> Hope you buy it, Uncle Jed. Sure would like to drive this rascal. You know how, do you, boy? Oh, it looks easier than the truck. Ain't even got no pedals. Please buy it, Pa. Well, I think we ought to see how it rides, Bert. Hot dog! Let's go! We hope to establish communication with Commander Blake very shortly, sir. However, still no trace of Mr. Drysdale. Well, don't worry about it. Meanwhile, sir, we're serving coffee and refreshments in the wardroom, uh, with the Admiral's permission. Well, that's fine. Thank him for it. Lead me to it. Bring this way, madam. Ain't we going for a ride, Pa? Well, that's up to this young fella right here. Can we please go for a ride? A ride? Yeah, Uncle Jed wants to see what this thing will do. The ship, sir? That's right. You mean you want to put out to sea, sir? Yep. Now, sir? Sooner the better. Don't you want to wait for the skipper? Hey, you're talking to the skipper. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Beg pardon, sir. Your orders will be carried out immediately. Thank you. Now let's go have some of that coffee. <laughs> be nice to raise these doorways tonight. Iron kind of dents a fellow's head. Ain't doing that iron no good, neither. <laughs> to keep driving around like this. We've covered the entire harbor area. From the land, but not from the sea. Well, I don't follow you. Well, maybe the clampers got to the wrong pier and aboard the wrong yacht, while the really big ones are anchored out in the channel. I suppose that is a possibility. Uh, pull over there, where it says speedboat to hire. Can I help you folks? Yes, you can. We need a good, fast boat and an experienced operator to take us around to the various yachts in the channel. Well, I'm your man. Good, good. How much? $35 an hour. $35 an hour? Chief, we've got to get out there somehow. I know, I know. Hey, what's going on? What is this, buddy? Don't this thing go any faster. Not with one person rowing. You know, your trouble is you're not smooth. You need a little rhythm and coordination. I also need a little help. Oh, very well. Oh, thank you. Now, one and the whole, and the one and the whole, and the whole. Miss Hathaway, you're not with me. Oh, I wish that were true. Now, one and the whole, and the whole. What's going on? Where'd they taking us? Well, they're taking us out for a little ride. Where's Ellie Mae? She's out on the back porch with all of them hired hands. <laughs> He's having a high old time. Well, that's good, good. Is that all the fellas it takes to run this boat? Appears to be. I told you they was padding the payroll. <laughs> well, now look for yourself. Six of them. And one of them is watching television. <laughs> what 
program you're watching? I beg your pardon? What's that? Radar. <laughs> Can't you tune it in better than that? I beg your pardon? I said... <laughs> Well, actually, the resolution is quite sharp. Uh, uh, this is Catalina Island, and this is a ship. This is another ship, and that's an airplane. Worst television set I ever seen. <laughs> Can I drive now? Oh, it's all right with me, but you'd best ask the fella at the steering wheel there. <laughs> Thank you. Uncle Jet says I can drive for a spell if it's all right with you. <laughs> Hold steady on one zero zero. Okay. Hey, Uncle Jet, we's doing a hundred. <laughs> kind of fast if you have to do any turning, ain't it? Well, there's one way to find out. <laughs> That was a very hazardous maneuver. <laughs> Thank you. Can I drive some more now? Uh, well, let's let the helmsman take the wheel for a while, huh? Okay. I'll work these levers. Oh, uh, uh... <laughs> uh... Sir, may I suggest that your family might enjoy being out on deck? Anything going on out there? Uh, well, I could arrange something, sir. <laughs> like what? Well, uh, how about a demonstration of our armament system? Firepower capabilities, defense and attack procedures. Sounds all right. Lead the way. <laughs> well, Miss Hathaway, you're certainly making a mess of this. We haven't gotten to one yacht. The current's too strong, Chief. Why don't you row for a while? Miss Hathaway, who owns the bank where you work? You do? Who pays your salary? Who signs your checks? You do? Then who rows? I do. Then get to it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Uncle Jed, you just gotta buy this boat. Why, you and me could do some tall hunting and fishing on this rascal. Look at those explosions throw that water in the air. a very sporting way to fish. But I reckon when you got all these men to feed, you can't fool around with no worm on a bent pin. What are they shooting at? High flying birds, I reckon. <laughs> was satisfactory, sir. Well, I reckon you've done your best. Well, yes, sir. We all did, sir. Well, then, it's up to me to make a decision, ain't it? Yes, sir. Just a minute. You got them figures wrote down, boy? Yes, sir, Uncle Jet. That there boat costs $6,000 a day to operate. She uses up 500 gallons of oil every hour, and them 250 hired hands eats better than 600 pounds of food a day. And she costs $3 million. You gonna buy it? I reckon not. What? Turn the car around. But... And fella, I made up my mind about your ship. You have, sir? Yep. I'm gonna pass it. <laughs> he passed us! He passed us! He passed us! He's pretty happy for a fellow that just lost a sale. Well, now 
it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation. Thank <music> you.